Lesson 312, A Course in Miracles. I see all things as I would have them be. Good morning and good golly everybody. It's been a while since I, since I have posted on my YouTube channel. I have filmed video. Oh no! I have filmed so much video. So many rants. So much discontent. And I chose not to post it. Not a one. And today's lesson in A Course in Miracles really helps me to get back on track again. How about you? I just take a little walk up the street. Busy stuff happening on our street today. Lots of plumbing trucks. Man, that's three plumbing trucks. Three plumbing trucks and a gardener. So it's pretty noisy. So I'll just take me a little walk interesting so much truth coming out right or so many lies hi pretty good thanks who knows nobody knows nothing it's so confusing <laughs> so I decided what I would do is just ignore it because I was thinking about my barometer for peace not my barometer for truth, not my barometer for my idea about what is being revealed or uh, how the masses are being manipulated through their initiation of water, through our gateway of cups, where a lot of us have a little bit of an open doorway. I decided I would just focus on my peace. And what a day to focus on peace. Hi! I gotta run past you. What a day to focus on peace because this is election day in the United States. And not really considered to be a very peaceful day. For most people, there's all of this tension going on. So I decided just, nope. Nothing is more important than that I feel good and everything is perfect, perfect, perfect. We live in a world of cause and effect and everything is coming down exactly as it should given the impetus or the causes. Choosing what is, like being with it now and letting it flow through. I personally do not have a candidate at all. I, um, I have a really super bad attitude about it. I, uh, I don't have a lot of hope around it. I don't have any focus on it whatsoever because something inside me is talking about counterfeits and a desire to know what is real. And that has been really bubbling around in me. Just really bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. Counterfeit versus real. And I'm wondering, I'm just trying on, that none of this may be real. All of this may be a staged show. Meant to get everybody into a lather. I don't know. Thankfully for most of you, I'm just a, 
just an older lady who doesn't really I better go this way because the gardeners are got go through blower things. Thankfully, I'm not a rabble rouser. Thankfully, my thoughts on things some of you might be thinking are not going to interfere with what, what you think is right. And I think that's thankful too. Because I can tend to, if I get into my, my warrior self, warrior woman Aries, I can tend to really go off the tracks mixed with my love for fundamentalism, you know. Anyway, what I'm doing today is creating peace and renewing my, renewing my search for the truth and what is real because I don't think I'm going to find it with what is going on right now. The emotions are way too high for me. I won't judge anybody else out there if you think you're right. The emotions are really super high for me and so when I find myself in that kind of a state then I tend to just spin my wheels. What I feel personally for myself right now is that this energetic story that's being presented here in the United States is going to be um, is going to be something I use for myself to discover what what is real. So no matter what the outcome today, that that makes me excited and thankful. So now I shall start my day. So far, this is my plan for the day. Besides my walking, my walking the Camino, I finished the Ten of Cups tarot box. That is going to get chock full of herbs from Mother Moon Monastery and Herb Farm and sent out today with probably some other goodies because the box that I send it out is the medium sized priority mailbox and I'll need to fill it up because I love to fill up those boxes and move some energy around here and this is the next box that I am in the process of I love this this older uh, cigar box. Isn't it cool? I love it. I, I really like going and getting all these cigar boxes because each one is like such a special. All for cigars and people just toss them. Anyway, the Fool card. So far I was just thinking about this because I started out with a yellow background which is mercurial. Fool card is ruled by uh, an air planet, Uranus. And then I, I painted his cloak black. And that opened up something for me that I never saw before in the Fool card. Of course, it's going to get decorated with his little pomegranates. But what I do is I just lay down the base colors first. And in doing so, I see things in these cards that I've never seen before. This morning as I painted the cliff and then painted the background, uh, giving that first little coat, 
I was feeling into what it would be like to live in such a vista to be able to look far far away and to wonder what would be on those mountain peaks since I just finished up the uh, hermit card who lives on those mountain peaks <laughs> Now the fool, he's packing up and he's going to like head out there with his little buddy. But that was what came up for me this morning was, what would it be like to live with such a grand vista view? What do you think? Look what came in the mail, friends. All the way from Sweden. Look at those stamps. Just this is this always gives me such a thrill. Just such a thrill all the way from Sweden. And I won't tell you, I'll just tell the first name. My my dear friend Sandra from Sweden. What have you sent, dear one? Let's see. Oh, let's see. Hold on a second. Okay, okay. Oh, look. She sent me some Nordic inspiration. Isn't that lovely? And she wrote me a little note on the back and talked about our shared Nordic heritage, our shared moon in Pisces and sent me these inspirational postcards for hard times. Isn't that cute? Make do, I love this. I love this, honey. This is pretty great. These are all old, actually these are war, war era postcards. And you know, um, this is kind of apropos because the newest WebBot report by Cliff High, he talks about the United States and indeed the world beginning a, a special times Cuba-esque way of being where we, we may, all of us, have to start growing our own food. Grow food in your garden or get an allotment. That's called a community garden here, but I know that in England, allotments are the same as community gardens. Cut gas and electricity. Very interesting. How sweet of you to think of me, Sandra. Thank you so much. It's right up my alley. See, here's another one. A living wage helps everybody. Am I proud? I'm fighting famine by canning food at home. <laughs> Thank you, dear. What a precious surprise to come in the mail today. Well, interesting divination for today. We live in an old house. Not as old as some of you, um, but for California, this is kind of considered an old house, especially in the area that we're in right now. I believe it was built in 1952. And we have lots of big trees on our street and on the property that we live in. Old plumbing. You know what that's like? So, ever since we moved in here, it's been, it's been really tough on the plumbing. 
and we're having some issues right now with our plumbing. So, what that means is that I have actually had to really watch how much how much um, water I use when I'm doing the dishes. But it's got me thinking because the interesting thing is that, you know, as I was walking up the street earlier, um, our, there's three plumbing trucks out front. Our neighbor is also having issues with plumbing. And uh, they're, they've got like got some kind of a big thing I thought they thought it might have been just a leak but looks like it's something more oh by the way look at Kelly gave me this this iron fry pan I haven't had one in so long and I just love it so much and I use it every day and I always what my grandmother always said because I used to cook in them all the time is that oh you want to you want to cook in iron because iron will put iron in your food. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know if that's true or not. But anyway, what I do is um, I, when I wash it and I just put a little bit of water on it and then do that scrub. Then afterwards, I get my uh, olive oil and I just put a little dab on it just to preserve it because it'll go rusty. I do have another one outside as a cauldron. Maybe I might bring that in and try to recondition that again, but I let it sit out for a really long time. That's where I burn my sage. It's over by my little witch statue. So that works out. And let me show you what I've done here to kind of help with my, uh, with my problem with the sink. So remember I showed you that big giant piece of wood cutting board sideboard that my friend found in the trash? And I did have it like scooted all the way over here and over that little uh, table there, but I pushed it over and covered this half of the sink. And I'm only using this half of the sink and then using my little uh, red tub in there to just use very little water. And then I'm not, I'm putting hardly any water at all down the drain. All the water is actually going out into gray water in my front garden. I actually love that because it's another way of saving water. So, I'd always wanted a gray water system for this, but Lover says no. I actually have a gray water system for my laundry, um, which if you don't know what gray water is, it's recycling the water and using it in the garden beds. I forgot to show you this. Did I show you that little fun scale that I got at a garage sale? Isn't that cool? These are my eggs for the day. The girls are not laying a whole lot right now that's two days worth because that's what happens with um, when the sun when the days get shorter is the chickens actually go into uh, like they conserve their energy and they do not um, lay as much look Sandra I took one of the postcards and put them over put it over here that's so cute. I already used up my egg yolks in our drink, but I wanted to show you. See these little tiny eggs? These are a little bit bigger than quail eggs. I, I used to raise quail, and so uh, we used to eat quail eggs every day too. These are pigeon eggs from my pigeons out there. So I'm not really interested in raising pigeons, but pigeon eggs are supposedly, supposedly very good for you. They're said to be the ginseng of eggs. And I can't say for sure that I believe that, but 
eggs are eggs and I believe that eggs from um, like our chickens I know what I'm feeding my chickens my pigeons I know what I'm feeding my pigeons they get a fully healthy diet natural diet and um, they're not wild pigeons they're uh, I got them all when they were babies they were called squeakers so they're very healthy and you can actually you can eat pigeons it's called squab but you can actually eat their eggs too two times as far as I can remember this has only happened two times in my entire life and that is having the experience of meeting people who have just awakened. What does that mean? Well, most people kind of know what that means, but um, starting to see like behind the curtain, like pulling, ha having Toto pull the curtain aside to see the media black magicians behind the curtain kind of a thing, two times. And both of them have been like totally wide-eyed and <gasps> now this doesn't mean that I mean I talk to a lot of people all the time who have already uh, seen behind the veil and you know um, they already get what's going on and and they're either in in the fight, either in the fight, resisting, or telling everybody that they can, or what I hope I'm doing, which I don't think I'm doing a very good job of, and that is trying to find really what's real instead of what the media black magicians are actually doing. And I, like I said, I don't think I'm doing all that good a job of it because like I was saying to Lover, I told him yesterday, I said, you know, um, it, it's a lot easier for me to believe in God's judgment. That's my old fundamentalism coming out than it is to believe, like the Course in Miracles says, that God's not judging anything. <laughs> anyway, two times. The first one was a, uh, one of my tarot students. And she wanted to learn about esoterica. You know, so it was, it was a part of her actionary um, lifestyle that she was living because she was in the process of waking up. I met her when she was about two months in. Oh, <gasps> no way! <gasps> you know what those Gwen Towers are? Oh, there's chemtrails! They're spraying us! Oh, there's more gallons! There's programming on television! There's like, like she was just, you mean we didn't go to the moon? Like stuff like that. And this morning, uh, I was actually talking with another friend who, believe it or not, this friend hasn't had internet. Well, she's not somebody who could afford to do something like that anyway. She lives really, really, really minimally. And on top of that, um, she's never really had a job before. She doesn't really go out in the world very much. And recently, she she got one of these iPhones, and it was hooked up to the internet. And she's every morning she comes over and she's like, "Did you know that? Hey, the cloning is real. What? How can this be?" And you know, like she's like going all over. This. She comes over and she'll t tell me the newest thing that's going on, right? That. I, and I'm not like 
whatever. Tell me something I don't know. Uh, she's now looking into monarch mind control and uh, that lady whose last name is O'Brien who wrote the book The Trance Formation of America and Military Industrial Complex and all of that kind of stuff. And my heart just went out to her because she came over this morning and her eyes just full of tears because she was reading about all of the satanic pedophilic power over government officials there are in the world. She didn't know any of that. And and she's just like, how can this be happening? How can this be happening? And I'm with her. You know, I heard, uh, I listened to a lot of different people on um, YouTube and one of the people that I listened to, and, and please don't think that I agree with everything. I'm just listening. I'm just being a listen. And that is Stefan Molyneux. And he was talking with two other guys, one of whom was, both of whom were bloggers, one of them was a Christian blogger. And neither Stefan Molyneux or the other fellow were Christians, but they were talking about all this stuff that came out on um, spirit cooking. I don't know if you've seen any of that but it was really disturbing and most of us already know that kind of shit goes on and they said something to the to the other blogger all three of whom are like they put a video up and they get like hundreds of thousands of views and the two non-christians said to the christian guy because because I guess they they were unaware of the extent. I personally ha are am aware through the other things that I listen to, Red Ice Radio, David Icke, um, well, there's others, Mark Dice, um, trying to see, you know, I can't see any others right here, but They said, you know, it almost makes me want to become a Christian. They said almost because that's not, I don't think that's the answer. But I totally get where they're coming from because it's so damn sickening. It's so sad. But, you know... <laughs> It's what I was talking about when I was telling you about South Wind and what South Wind means to me um, in terms of the ancestors and me being an ancestor to the next seven generations and our responsibility and having South Wind be overrun and cannibalized and just horribleized by all this zombie death shit. You know, I talked about that right around South Wind. But what, what do people expect? I mean, for Christ's sake. You know, that's... Oh, we're, we're just playing. We're just playing. Well, there are people who are not just playing with that crap. Two people and my heart just really goes out to them because I don't know I don't know if I want to give my friend more googleable items I would prefer not to I mean, it is it is bad enough to look up 
and and see what they're doing with the chemtrails. We're just getting sprayed like bugs here in Southern California in an effort to geo engineer keep the the rain from us to keep the water to keep the water from us. And by the way, I also now officially have three friends with full blown Morgellons, which is, which is, if you don't know what that is, that's a Googleable thing. Three friends, all of whom have gone to the doctors, and you know what the doctors do for them? Give them antibiotics. I had met another lady some years back. She knew that I was an herbalist and that I had a lot of tinctures that I had made and she came here with those kinds of symptoms. This was, oh man, I don't know if you're a long time watcher of the Real Witches of Orange County, you may, may remember me talking about it because I think it was five or six years ago. She, she couldn't figure out what it was. She was thinking maybe if I dosed myself with wormwood. Here's another, uh, another, let's see, um, Crow777. Take a look at his work. But when my friend came over with her eyes all full of tears this morning, what I really wanted to say to her was, make friends with God through your heart and, and find the, the safe, beautiful spot inside. And that's really basically what I'm trying to do. I say trying because um, I, I have a hard time staying there. Anyway, I am going to end my, my little video today. Tomorrow we shall see what erupts on the planet. Or maybe we won't see anything. Maybe it'll all just be peace. Here's hoping. Thanks for coming to the Real Witches of Orange County today. Love and bless, bless.